Listen one, load your gun, drill the land to kingdom come. Lesson two, grease some wheels, gas is sexy, spin a deal. Lesson three, something leaks, poison water, spread disease. I oh, did you think we stand by and let you do it? No! Did you think we stand by and let you do it? No! No! Both are not 
not in accordance with the Alpha's convention, not what the public expected, but tolerable via freedom of information. In respect of capacity to put things right, in April of this year, six months into Crawford's 12-month extension, the applicant said, we are addressing the environment agency's preconditions. We'll start work when these are addressed. Today, eight months later, or eight months after the extension began, still no activity, none of the, no the confident lack of urgency, but perhaps they will apply for another extension, which brings me to my final question, my question three. Could I ask members, when is a temporary application not a temporary application? Planning officers would concede that in theory, a temporary application can be extended indefinitely, provided no demands. To describe this proposal as temporary, but at the same time acknowledging that it is only the first stage of a much longer process, is contradictory, confusing to the public, and dismissive of their serious concerns for the local ecology and their environmental human rights. How can you reassure yourselves and the public that the potentially extendable temporary site of West Newton B does not evolve into a continuous 25-year occupation. Because the bunding, fencing, and alarming signs warning of explosive atmosphere Thank remain to this day at the West Newton A site. Tumbleweed is accumulating at Crawberry Hill. Both sites undesirable and uncharacteristic features of our landscape and testament to the meaningless description temporary. We sincerely request that this committee receives all of the information it requires and considers the proportionality of that information in respect of the decision to then we ask that this matter is deferred. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thirdly, the well test, 
which will be undertaken after each borehole has been drilled. A 37 metre high work overlay, together with other lower level equipment, will be brought onto the site. The purpose of the well test is to provide additional data on the extent and quality of the reservoir, as well as providing samples of the produced fluid for analysis. Finally, respiration. On completion of operations, Rathlin Energy will make a decision as to whether the reservoir is commercially viable. If a successful production test is achieved, further development will be dependent on the planning application and the submitted mission to produce the trolling. <coughs> if the boreholes are not commercially viable, then they will be plugged and abandoned in accordance with applicable regulations and industry guidance and the site restored to its original condition. The proposal accords with both national and local planning policy is set out in the planning statement and in the officer's report. Environmental considerations have included ecology, noise, landscape and visual impact, traffic and transport, cultural heritage and archaeology, groundwater and flood risk, lighting and waste. Rathlin Energy has demonstrated that each of these issues has been considered and satisfactorily addressed. <coughs> planning consent is just one of a number of statutory consents required before the drilling of petroleum boreholes can commence. Rathlin Energy is liaising closely with the Environment Agency and the Health and Safety Executive, neither of which have raised any objection to this planning application to ensure all relevant permissions and permits are secured. Based on the information submitted, and in line with your officer's assessment and recommendation, we hope that this committee feels able to support this application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um, so you know the Councillor, you also have five minutes. Good morning, I'm John Holt, the Ward Councillor in Mid Holdens. I've been asked by a number of residents in my ward to speak against the planning application from Rathlin Energy to drill for oil and gas at West Newton B. Ladies and gentlemen, the track record of Rathlin drilling at West Newton A is not a good one, with many complaints of smell, noise, transport disruption, excessive police presence, and a large number of lorries going on and off the site. Fortunately, West Newton A is a site that did not require transport to travel through a very busy village. This will not be the case at Spurtley. In their recent newsletter, Rathman stated that any extra traffic will be temporary, but this will not be the case if sufficient oil is found to extract it. I'm afraid the suggestion that they will work at Spurtley School to teach the children on road safety and a commitment to work with the council <laughs> to put in a temporary crossing of the village will not make up for the large number of heavy lorries that will pass through the village. In that newsletter, Rathlin also say that, and also point out, the problems with odour at West Newton A were unforeseen and efforts were made to resolve the issue. This is not good enough. What other unforeseen issues will arise at West Newton B? We don't know, and neither do they. This entire venture seems to be open to issues that Rathlin cannot control. It will further industrialise our countryside, make the life of the residents more difficult, and ultimately bring virtually no benefits in terms of quality of life and extra income and jobs into the area. It's not worth the extra trouble for those who live in mid holiness and I will urge the committee to reject the application. Thank you.
uh, application subject to the conditions set out in section 12 of the report. That has been moved and seconded. All, all those in favour of approving this application, please chair. That application is carried. One, two. This is abuse of office. You're guilty of abuse of office. I don't understand. I don't understand why Water Authority and the Environment have made no objection at all. Because they, they said they want to know. They just leave it to the new guys. When their trees and land oh, and no. animals disappear, etc. Yeah. But you don't and the power of the corporatocracy. And oh yeah. And roughly, a foreign country, no foreign firm. Yeah, Canadian, absolutely. Canadian, so they'll just walk away. Of course they will, absolutely. And leave us the mess. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because they're compliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need more, aren't we? That's the problem. Can we get them? Yeah. <clears throat> Cheers, buddy. But we're still in it. It's a free country, a democratic country, maybe oh, in a common in virtual country. So what do you think is actually going to happen? Uh, I can't comment on the press. Eh? You know. So what was your briefing? The people who have an interest in, in the uh, environment in which they live. Do you live around here? You, are you local? No? Anyway, here's Ian. He's the Hi. He's a great one. He's the great one. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, all right? Yes. No surprises there, huh? How you doing, my friend? You good? Yeah. Hey, good. Yourself? Not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> 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 
of uh, Frack Free East Yorkshire, uh, also stood as a Green Party candidate in the uh, recent general election. So Richard, we've just come out of the planning committee meeting of East Riding of Yorkshire Council and seen uh, the decision being made. What's your, what's your reaction? Uh, not very surprising. The whole attitude of East Riding Council has been pretty disgraceful, really. They're searching us on the way in. They're not doing that for other planning meetings. They're treating us completely differently. Um, the... They, the fossil fuels need to stay in the ground. They seem to be incapable of understanding this. Um, it's been carried. They moved it to a smaller room to try and exclude people. This is not good practice of how you do democracy. Uh, these meetings should be open and transparent as possible. That's not really what's and, and from the declarations made by the councillors prior to the um, uh, debate kicking off, it was very evident that Rathlin Energy had phoned every single councillor last night. It did look that way, didn't it? Yeah. So, not quite sure what's going on there. That's, yeah, that's all that's going on. So, yeah, this is the corporatocracy at work. So, basically, the uh, East Riding Council basically claimed, or appeared to claim, that they really had no option because everybody else had approved it and, and therefore they had to approve it. Yeah, they really did have a uh, real. Uh, lack of courage in this. Um, there were, what, uh, over a hundred objections, uh, none or possibly one in favour. The people don't want this, um, but the councillors uh, completely failed to represent what local communities and what people want. And no consideration whatsoever about Rathlin's track record? Uh, no, I mean, uh, what, 19 breach of environment agency permit, uh, they take an enforcement action against them, the HSE is investigating them. These are absolute cowboys, they're incapable of doing this job safely. And once again, the um, planning officer actually lied. I mean, he knew very well that there are something like 18 or 19 breaches, and in response to a question, he said there were one or two. Uh, yeah, that's not really re accurately reflecting what's going on, is it? <laughs> Uh, and another councillor at one point compared this to a historic planning application for mobile phone masks. I mean, to even think that the level of risk involved in this is comparable to a mobile phone is just to so massively misunderstand what's going on. It's, yeah, it's quite shocking. So, what's the next stage? Well, the next stage, I don't think um, there's no real, although we're shocked and disappointed, uh, we're not surprised by this. So, yeah, the campaign continues. So the other thing that they seem incapable of understanding is they passed it as a temporary application, which is like giving planning permission for the foundations of a house uh, as if you're not going to give planning permission for the house to be built, which is ludicrous. So if you're going to allow an exploratory well, you really have to be considering the impacts of a production well because there's no point exploring if you're not going to produce. And they completely failed to do that. And that is just a huge flaw in the whole system. And so now there's an opportunity, of course, for um, raising awareness. People who hadn't previously... People who hadn't previously shown any interest hopefully will now start to realise that this is a very real threat. Yeah, I mean, uh, a couple of years ago, the, f these, the first two wells, Crowborough Hill and West Newton, were drilled. Not many people know about them. Now there's a huge level of coverage. That's only going to increase as time goes on. And yeah, the awareness of gone, opposition is increasing. And yet again, the latest government poll, the government's own figures showing the favourability of different technologies. Shale gas has got even less popular. Uh, yeah, so the whole move is away from fossil fuels. And uh, Yorkshire now is, is seriously under attack because we have third energy in North Yorkshire, uh, eye gas in South Yorkshire, and now Rathlin Energy, of course, uh, in East Yorkshire. And it's quite interesting to notice that in North Yorkshire, the programme Third Energy is doing is pretty much the same as what Rathlin Energy is doing in East Yorkshire, but they're calling it fracking. Basically, the only people who seem to think that what's going on here isn't fracking is Rathen Energy and Graham Stewart. Sorry. Well, obviously, it's all to be continued. Yeah. Indeed. Thanks, Richard. Thanks very much. Let's 
and one, load your gun, drill the land till kingdom come. Lesson two, grease some wheels, gas and sexy spin a deal. A lesson three, something leaks, poison water, spread disease. I did you think we stand by and let you do it? Nothing here that's broken, nothing you need to fix. 